now we're going to talk about subduction zones. So this lesson is all about the convergent boundaries. The, um, in class we talked about divergent boundaries. So this is all about convergent. And so subduction zones form where an oceanic plate collides with another plate, either another oceanic plate or possibly a continental plate. Now, typically the colder, denser oceanic crust is going to be pushed down underneath. The continental plate is a little bit less dense, and so it's going to float a little bit more up on top compared to the oceanic crust, which is denser, so it's going to actually be pushed underneath. Now, the amount of destruction from subduction actually equals roughly the construction that's formed at the mid-ocean ridge. So we have about the same amount of crust that's being created as we do um, that's being destroyed. So it's, it roughly equals each other. Now, subduction zones dip mostly at angles between 30 degrees and 70 degrees. So if you take a look at this picture, Sometimes you see them a little bit more, sometimes you see them a little bit less. But that dip here at the subduction zone typically is a, between 30 and 70 degrees. Now we can actually look at that dip and sort of compare it to the velocity or the speed and relate that to time as well. So the dip of this slab here is, rel is related inversely to the velocity of convergence at the trench. Basically, that means that there's a re an inverse relationship between the dip and the speed at which that convergence happens. And this all relates back to time. So it basically comes down to this. The older the crust, the steeper it dips. So if this were an extreme dip, like maybe it was closer to 70 than it is to 30, that would mean that it's a little bit older. Basically, it's being pulled more um, because of time-wise. So the older the crust there, the steeper the dip is going to be. Now we have some evidence for subduction, which includes three different pieces. So the first piece of evidence is the distribution of temperature that we find at depth. The oceanic slab is usually surrounded by higher temperatures. So this gives some sort of evidence for subduction. We also see and uh, can see the existence of certain landforms, such as deep sea trenches and sometimes folded sediments. And we see this along the trenches around the globe, where these are basically landforms created by, dis uh, by subduction. We also have things called the Benioff zones. Now these zones are narrow zones along the dip of the subduction zone, so in this particular area over here. And these particular places are known for earthquakes that, are, that can extend either from the surface or all the way down to about 680 kilometers, which is about 423 miles deep. So at the Benioff zones, we sometimes see the deeper seated earthquakes instead of sometimes in, um, for example, other convergent plate boundaries, we might see them a little bit, typically a little bit closer to the surface. So the Benioff zone is the deeper earthquakes that we see. So these are three pieces of evidence that we see for subduction. Now, along these trenches, along the deep sea trenches of subduction, we tend to see things called island arcs. And there's plenty across the globe. We have many. So. Um, one example is around the Lesser Antilles, towards the Western Atlantic in the Caribbean Sea. And um, I have a picture of that for you down here. A lot of times we see them in the Pacific Ocean. So along um, like Japan, the Philippines, Indonesia, these are actually all island arcs. Now these are formed when the oceanic lithosphere or the oceanic crust is subducted beneath another piece of oceanic lithosphere. So island arcs form when two oceanic crusts come together. And this is a picture over here. It's an artist rendition, but this is kind of what we might see in island arcs. So we find island arcs typically around shrinking margins or convergent boundaries. And like I mentioned already, the Pacific Ocean and the Western Atlantic has a few.
Now these islands are usually located parallel to the trench on an overriding plate. So for example, if you look at this picture, here's the plate here. This is the plate that's overriding the one that's being subducted. So that's where we're going to see those islands. And they're usually found about 150 to 200 kilometers from the trench. So in miles, it's about 93 to 124 miles. So if we were taking a look at this picture here with the Lesser Antilles, they sort of go up towards the northwest. We can probably guess that the, that the fault line or the boundary between the two plates also run about uh, northwest in that particular direction. Now there's a lot of characteristic features about island arcs and around these zones. And here's a couple of them, and on the next page you'll see the picture. So we see something called a trench outer rise. Now this is a bulge in the, in the sea floor that's ahead of the subduction zone, and it usually marks the boundary between the two plates. So this is really where we're going to see the boundary between the plates. We have the outer slope and the inner slope of this particular feature as well. So the outer slope are gen generally gentle. They're broken by faults as the plate bends, but they're, they're pretty gentle slopes. Whereas the inner slopes tend to be a little bit steeper than the outer slope. And it's going to contain fragments of the subducting plate. Kind of like in your textbook, explain it like shavings from wood. If you were a carpenter and shaved wood, they'd sort of have those little fragments of the subducting plate. We also see something called a subduction complex. Now this is the accretionary prism, and I'll show you again in the next slide is the picture. Now this is the slice from the descending slab that may form significant landforms. And in some of the cases, we have examples in the western, um, in the western Atlantic around the Lesser Antilles. The islands of Trinidad and Tobago and the Barbados are actually formed because of this accretionary prism. So this particular slide sort of shows you some of those things that we mentioned. Um, I mentioned the accretionary prism. So this right here is your accretionary prism, and this is going to form some islands as well. So we have our island, our volcanic island arc over here, and we have, notice all this stuff is kind of the, from the plate that's the, the overriding plate. And in this case, we have this accretionary prism, and um, it forms this bulge sometimes, and that's where we have, um, sometimes we have islands forming here. Talking about the outer and the inner, um, the inner slopes, what we have, we're going to see the outer slopes around here, which is a little bit more gentle. But as we move down our inner slope, we're going to notice that it's a little bit more, a uh, little bit more steep. Now the trench outer rise is also sort of in this general area. Um, the fore arc, this kind of covers the outer rise and it covers that accretionary prism that we just mentioned in the other slide. So while this particular slide does not have all the, exactly all the features, it is a good little feature, good little picture to show you some of the, some of the features that were on the last page.